Good afternoon, everyone. Welcome and thank you for joining today. My name is Amanda Meyer and I'm the Marketing Coordinator here at Estimating Edge. Today, Troy Good, who is our training and technical support, will cover RACAP markup. Before we get started, we have a couple housekeeping items. All lines have been muted and we'll answer the questions after the webinar. To ask questions, enter them into the question window. Troy, next slide, please. Thank you. I will be sending out an email with a recorded link. The recording will also be available on our website on demand. When you leave the webinar today, a pop-up window will open with a three-question survey. We'd love to hear your feedback. Don't forget to sign up for next year's webinars. And the next one is Standing Theme on February 19th. Thank you, everyone, for joining. Troy, let's get started. Thank you, Amanda. So today I'm going to be walking you through the recap screen and some of the functionality that you have with that. Uh, <clears throat> some of the things I'm going to be showing you today are the difference between tax class markups, user code markups, and scenario markups. I'm also going to be showing you how to add a bond to your job, as well as if your job already has a bond, how to turn that off. <clears throat> We're also going to be talking about the different ways that you can view profit. And then lastly, today we're going to talk about locales and how you can use them in your job. So first off, how do you get to your recap screen? Well, you can access the recap screen from any one of the breadcrumbs at the top that you see. So in this case, we're looking at scenarios. You'll notice that we have our recap checkbox icon right here on the scenario. <clears throat> but today I'm actually going to move forward all the way through to conditions where you would actually be when you're working on your job. Now, when you're here in the top middle of your screen, you have your recap icon here. You're simply going to click on that. Now, something that I want to talk to you about very at the very start here is going to be the subdivisions. Now, if you're working inside of a job that has multiple different subdivisions, you're going to recognize those over here on the right-hand side. So in this case, for this job, you can see that I have a roofing subdivision, I have a drywall subdivision, as well as an acoustical subdivision. And I can flip between those if I want to see exactly what's being associated with those material, labor, equipment, <clears throat> other, whatever tax class wise, I can flip between those. So in today's case, we're going to be working with our roofing subdivision. So the first thing I want to talk about is adding a tax class markup in and how you do that. So right now on our screen, we have our tax in here, we have our labor burden, we have our overhead, and we have our profit. These are the default lines that are gonna come in um, <clears throat> when you get out to your recap screen. Now, the way that you can add a markup in for a tax class would simply be by double clicking on any one of these lines. So in this case, we're gonna work with labor, and I'm actually gonna add in a an indirect burden line. So to do that, I'm going to simply double click on where it says burden. And right here, I'm going to click add. For my description, I'm going to type in indirect burden. And then I'm also going to give it a percentage. So in this case, I'm going to choose 10. And I'm actually going to check this cumulative box as well and click save. I'm also going to go ahead and change my burden here to 10%. So I'm going to double click here, type in 10%, and I'm gonna click save. Now lastly, I wanna add in another markup. And in this case, I'm just gonna call it markup. We're gonna call it markup two. And I'm gonna give this a percentage of 10% as well. And on this one, I'm not gonna check cumulative. And I'm gonna click save, and I'm gonna save again. Now, the reason that I checked cumulative on the indirect burden and not on markup two was to show you the difference between those. So in this case, we changed our burden to 10%. So our burden is now pulling 10% of our subtotal of labor, which is that $16,052 there. Now, what cumulative does is it takes your subtotal as well as whatever lines are above it. So in this case, we have burden above it. It's going to add both of those two together and then it's gonna hit 10% on top of that subtotal. So it would be the subtotal of labor, which would be the 16,052, plus the 1,605, and then it's gonna hit it with 10% there, which gives you the 16, or the 1,765. 
So that's the differences that you have between cumulative and non-cumulative when working in the recap screen. Now, the change that I made is specific to just this one job. But let's say I wanted to make that change in the database and I want that to reflect for every job moving forward from this point. Well, the way to do that would be to go to the top right and click on estimating. And then you're going to choose subdivisions. So you'll double click on subdivisions. And in this case, I'm going to choose roofing because that's the one that we're working in. And I'm going to click the edit button. And then I'm going to go to my tax class markups because that's what we're dealing with. And I'm going to choose labor in this case. Now, as you can see in here, I have my indirect burden set to 0%. Now, if I wanted this to come in every single time with 10%, I would simply double click, change this to 10, and click Save. Now, in this case, I'm not going to click Save just because it's demonstration purposes. But if you wanted to make this change, you would click Save, and then you would also click Save again down here at the bottom. Now, the next thing that I want to talk with you about, going back to the recap screen, is going to be the capability that you have with user code markups. Now, for example, when we're looking at labor, let's say we wanted to add a markup specific to just roofing labor. So I would click the drop down here on the left hand side, the little triangle, and I see this roofing labor line here in blue. I want to add a markup to just that. To do that, I simply double click. And now I have this new pop-up window. You're going to click Add. And here, again, I'm just going to call this one Markup 2. And this markup percentage, I'm just going to put 5% in here. And I'm going to click Save and Save again. And what's going to happen is it's going to recalculate on your recap screen. So now, if I expand this back out and I look at my roofing labor, I can expand that back out and I can see exactly what percentage has been marked up for that user code. Now, the next thing we also want to talk to you about out here is your scenario markups you have. Now, scenario markups could be things like contract tax or permitting fees, anything that you have capable inside of that. So in this case, what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to add in a contract tax. Now to do that, you have to go up here to bids, then you go to edit, scenario properties. Now under the scenario properties, you're gonna see a couple lines here on the left-hand side. Right now we're gonna be talking about this markup line. Now I wanna add in a contract tax. To do that, I'm gonna click add, and where it says new markup here, I'm gonna type in contract tax. And I'm going to give it a 5% contract tax, and I'm going to click Save. Now, sometimes you might have to refresh your recap screen to see that. To do that, you click on the recap icon, and it'll refresh for you. So now you can see that contract tax in here. Now, that's making that contract tax, that scenario markup, specific to this job. Well, let's say that you wanted to make that a default setup for your database and you want that to pull through for every job moving forward. The way you would do that is you would go to options, preferences, and then inside of preferences down here at the bottom you see this recap scenario markups. You would simply click on that and as you see I've got a couple in here already created. If I wanted to add a new one I would click add, give it a name, give it a percentage, so in this case we'll do 15%, and click Save. Now, again, I made that change, however, it's not reflecting here. It's because I made that change in the database. So if you want that change to be reflected on this job, you would have to do it the way we did it the first time. But just know that that change is made in the database, so every job moving forward from this point, you're actually going to be able to see that markup and it will pull in on your recap screen by default every time. The next thing we want to talk to you about that deals in the same area is bond. Now, the way you can turn on a bond if your job doesn't have one is by going up to bids, edit, and then scenario properties again. Right above that markup line, you're going to see bond. 
So in this case, I'm gonna click on bond and you'll notice that I've already got some dollar limits as well as some percentages already in here. If I wanted to add a new one, I would click the add button down here in the bottom left. I would click add, I would give it my dollar limit and then I would give it my percentage for my bond. And then I would check this box right here that says scenario is bondable. This is going to turn that bond on for your job. I'm gonna click save. And then again, you might have to refresh. So I'm gonna refresh my recap screen. And now you'll see that bond is in here. Well, let's say you're starting to work on a job and it already has a bond that's coming in. The way that you would turn that bond off is very simple. You double click on the bond line, and then where it says scenario is bondable, you would simply just turn that off and click save. And now that bond line is going to disappear for you. <clears throat> so those are some of the markups that you have capable to you here. The next thing we want to talk about is profit in the different ways that you have uh, the ability to view your profit. Now, <clears throat> to edit your profit inside of a job, you simply double click on it and it's going to open up this dialog box for you. You'll see we have percent and we have profit to sell. Now, a big question is, is what's the difference between percent and profit to sell? Well, percent is a percentage of the subtotal of the job, okay? So if we look at this, we're at 12.5% right now. That's 12.5% of the subtotal of the job here. Profit to sell is a percentage of the contract total. So down here, we have the contract amount. This is gonna be a percentage of that contract amount there. So if you wanted to change the way that you're viewing your profit, there's a display method right here. You would simply click the drop down and you would choose the way that you would like to view it. Now we have per percent, we have profit to sell, we have profit per hour, per crew day, and per man day viewable to you. So in this case, we're currently viewing in percent, but let's say I wanted to swap this to profit to sell. I would click the drop down. I would choose profit to sell. And then under my profit to sell column, I'm now going to change what percentage I want to see. So in this case, let's say I want to see 12.5% profit to sell. I'm going to click OK. The screen will refresh. And now you're seeing that my profit line is set to 12.5% profit to sell. And you'll also notice over here on the right hand side that my dollar amount has changed because now this is based off of my contract amount rather than my subtotal amount. Again, this is something that can be saved underneath that subdivisions view. So again, if you go to estimating subdivisions and you open this up, in, in this case, we're working with roofing your profit tab right here, this is where you would change that. So this is going to be how it's going to be set up default right now is by percentage. If you wanted to change it to profit to sell, you could click profit to sell, put your percentage in and click save. And then again, every job moving forward is going to be reflective of what you've made a change to out here. The subdivision markup, this is where we currently contain overhead. If you want to be able to change that, you just simply double click, make your change here, and you're good to go as long as you make sure you click the save button. Now, one of the last things that we want to talk about are locales. Now, locales are <clears throat> used for working in, say, different cities, different states, uh, an area where you know you're going to have a different uh, tax rate or you're going to have a different cost per hour, say, for your labor screen. Uh, dealing with the labor screen, when we look at that, right now, we have it set up to $50 per hour for most of our roofing labor. And this is what we're going to be associating with right now is the roofing labor. Now, when it comes to a locale, you're also able to not only adjust your cost per hour for the specific area, but you're also able to adjust markups in that area as well. First of all, the way to create a locale is to click on estimating. 
go out to your database and you see this locales line here. You're simply going to double click. Now, in this case, I have some already built out. If you wanted to build one from start, you would click the green plus here and you would start customizing the information inside of here. So right now we're looking at your labor rates. Up here at the top is where you're going to put in, in this case, the city or the state of the locale that you're working in. And then you have your subdivisions in here. You have bond and your scenario markups. These are all things that you would be able to change with the locale as well. When it comes to dealing with a subdivision, you would choose which subdivision you're using. So again, we're working with roofing. I would double click on that roofing and I would start to go through here and customize what I want to see. So in this case, when I'm looking at this, I would check the override button and I would come out here and for labor, I would start making adjustments to this. And you would work through each step of this and setting this up specific to the area that you're working. Now, in this case, I already have one created that I'm going to use. So if I'm at my condition screen, and I want to be able to put a locale on this job, the easiest way to do that, and you can do this from any screen. I can do it from the condition screen. I can do it from the labor screen. I could even do it from the recap screen. So at the recap screen, we're currently viewing all of the markups that we've made adjustments to. Well, if I wanted to change the locale of my job, the easiest way is to click on bids, edit, and bid properties. Right above address here, you have this locale line. As long as the locale has been created in the database, you can click the drop down. And in this case, I'm going to choose Dade County and I'm going to click Save Bid. It's now going to pop up this message that says you have changed the locale, the labor rates, subdivision overrides, and user code overrides for the checked out scenario will all be set to the new locale settings. So you're going to click OK. The program is going to think it's going to process that information. And then when it loads back up into the job, if you go through and you view your recap screen, so in this case, I'll view the recap screen right from here, you'll notice that I've made changes inside of here. So my burden now for my labor is set to 35%. I no longer have the indirect at 10% with the cumulative on it. I no longer have the markup on there below the indirect. My profit is also no longer a profit to sell. It is now just a percentage and it's at 15%. And you'll see I have this 10%, which is a scenario markup here as well. So in this case, I forgot to add my name. So I'll just add it in there right now and click save. Now, if you remember, <clears throat> excuse me, if you remember when we were looking at the labor screen, our cost per hour was set to $50 for our roofing labor. So when we go back and look at the roofing labor, you can now see that our cost per hour is actually set to 55. So it pulled that override from the locale. So locales are very useful to you guys if you're working in different areas that you know your labor rate is going to be different for your cost per hour you know that your material is going to have a higher tax on it or a lower tax your burden is probably going to fluctuate depending on where you're at <clears throat> so you guys have this capability to use so that way it makes it easier for you and you're not having to go in here inside of this job and change your cost per hour you're not having <clears throat> to go in here and also change your recap markups for each job that's in a different area than where you're used to working. So that's all I have to show for you today. I'm gonna to send it back to you, Amanda. Thank you, Troy. And if anyone has any questions, please ask them in the question window. And if not, then everyone have a great day.